I, uh, this is Jess Calvin. Uh, I have with me, um, and now who are you again? I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is James Kahn, um, and I go by Hank. That's okay. so uh, on my website and my stuff. I'm Hank for U.S. Senate, uh, but my name is James Conn, spelled C-O-N-N, and I'm running. I'm oh, living in California, and in 2022, I'm running for United States Senate. Mm. And, and I and I apologize that we were supposed to do this earlier, but uh, the time the time difference. I think there was confusion on both sides as far as the part goes. So uh, we're here now, and we're going to talk now, and hopefully we'll be able to get to some voters through this uh, interview or a discussion, whichever you want to call it. So, uh, so uh, you're running as a Green Party candidate in California, right? That is correct. I, I've been I've been registered Green Party, except for like two months, since 1991. Okay. Uh, what brought you to the Green Party in the first place? I mean, environmental, economics, stuff of that nature, or is there anything specific? Uh, right off the bat, environmental. Um, when you just start there on pollution, um, I was born in 1967, so the 70s was filled with a lot of uh, anti-nuclear war, um, smog uh, being controlled in the 1970s, um, being raised in California. The idea of being an environmentalist, going to Yosemite really spoke to me. And then when you start looking at it as ha having equality and uh, being not only to a healthy environment, um, poor people that live in unhealthy polluted areas, you get enlightened. And then if you want to go to Yosemite, then you start to see how they destroy, how people destroy uh, uh, trees and, and it all kind of falls together. At that point, you start to realize that unless we save the environment, nothing that we do uh, will ever matter. That's got to come first. So, okay, uh, so let me uh, put this in a different way or at least uh, 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 abstracted for myself in a different way. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, say, you have an apartment and you either uh, are able to uh, pay rent or you are able to uh, pay for cable. Well, you can have cable, but you but you have to, but, but, but you wouldn't be able to uh, stay in the place, be able to watch that cable. So you had to pay the rent first. And the earth would be the rent, and cable would be the overall uh, system we have here. So it'd be it's or better to. A very simple analogy is you're on an airplane and say, put your mask on first. And then to help the guy next to you, right? right? That's, yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, priorities, man. It's uh, yeah. Um, it it really comes down to that. And over my lifetime, I've just seen things get worse, 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 and worse. So and what, uh, yeah. What, what what is the environment like in California that would pertain to uh, what you're fighting for? Well, it's a big state right now. I live in Humboldt. I'm born and raised in in uh, Long Beach, California. I lived in. Uh, uh, I lived in LA, Long Beach. I spent a lot of time in San Francisco. I'm now up in Humboldt, which is about five hours drive north of San Francisco. It's about 700 miles. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and recently, Huntington Beach just had an oil spill. Yeah. It was national news. Um, I grew up uh, surfing that beach. Uh, I remember before, I remember when it was just a head shop and a, and a, uh, taco, and a taco shop there. Um, it's, it's uh, and to see, and, and that was just basically, um, you know, if, if you're from Huntington Beach and I'm from Long Beach, Long Beach is just a little bit north and we're the port town and all the smog, all the pollution that from the port goes over Long Beach. And so the people that live in Long Beach are suckers. Mm. But it caught up to Huntington Beach because that pollution that has been going on through the refineries and the ports for so long. And they thought, oh, well, that, that stays in Long Beach here in Huntington Beach. Uh, rich people in the south were safe from that. Now they got an oil spill. Yeah. Well, okay. here because all that before all this stuff catches up with you. Yeah, I mean, what what, what would you uh, what would you recommend to uh, help fix that other than uh, being away from oil and gas? Uh, what would you do in that situation? There are so many things. Um, let's start with the media. Um, things. If you have you ever heard of Corexit? Corexit. If you got to look it up, it's C O R E X I T, all capitals. It is a dispersant of oil, which is used commonly all whenever there's an oil spill. Corrects it, it corrects it to the damage of the ocean and its life forms when added to the oil spill is equal to the oil spill. Or so it's been, if you look up, uh, and, the, and this, because anyways, look it up. And, and the thing is, corrects it, which is used by British Petroleum, has been banned in Britain. So let's start with, look, if you go on my website, 
hankforsenate.com. I made, I put a little clip it, a clipping of uh, about three things on the Gulf oil spill. And the very start of it is a woman digging through uh, 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 shrimp right. and she's finding the dispersant in the shrimp along with the oil. And that's going to market and getting eaten by people. Yeah. Yeah. No, right? I'm not, yeah. I've never seen so, that. So let's start about how the industry is ran currently in a destructive and pollutive manner. Let's start about how, uh, you know, even if we, okay, so I say stop, stop producing oil, right? Mm -hmm. But look at the way it's done around. Now it's almost criminal, right? So people will say, well, okay, so all right, what about cars, you know? And then it, then it gets in that discussion. So yeah. if you point out how it's gotten out, it's such a filthy way. And look, and look, look at the stories that we all kind of forget out of our mind about how 10 years ago that when there were supposed to be people going in on these, uh, deep horizon oil that they were doing cocaine and there's parties and, and but that was the exaggeration but it was basically people were paying off just to be allowed to continue oil without being uh inspected and how much of that has changed well if now you got Huntington beach which all those houses are million dollars two million dollars right and so they're getting away with it there and, and, and million dollar and there now you got you know these million dollar homes and who's gonna want to I get a beach house on Huntington Beach where you got oil on Dog Beach or uh, down the cliffs on Huntington Beach. Hmm. So uh, you got a bunch of frauds in Congress. Right. Who are, and if you go on my website, you'll see that I took the clipping of Barack Obama conceding that they have no control over these, over the oil industry. Right. And if you look in, Dece in, in December of last year, or sorry, it was January of last year, Biden says, oh, I'm going to stop oil drilling, freezing all oil drilling, right? Makes congressional disagree. Three weeks ago, now giving out oil drilling, expanding oil drilling in the Gulf. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I saw that. Yeah. So, yeah. so you got a guy like me, you know, I, I'm passionate about saving the earth because I love it, right? I see uh, how it's destroyed. I grew up poor. So I understand poverty. I'm a social worker. I understand people who are poor. That's what I'm trying to do. And, and I talk to people this way and I think it's good. You know, I'm not a politician that's trying to play Sim City. <laughs> I'm not uh, some poli sci bachelor dude who's trying to prove that I can, I can prove that socialism uh, should work, have worked all along and want to ruffle people's feathers with identity theory. We are, we are dying as a planet. We are in greed and we are letting the poor suffer. We don't even want to talk about it. I sent out a tweet, you know, here, here we have, here we have a, a, a Hertz rent a car a year ago. We're bankrupt. We have no money. A year later, we want a hundred thousand Teslas. Why? because they got protection of bankruptcy laws so they could get out of the storm of the pandemic and be billionaires. And, yeah. Right. <laughs> and we say, I don't want to be evicted. I want food. I want healthcare. So when my, when I get my family gets COVID, I don't get a $200,000 bill, but that, uh, too big to fail for these industries. But, this is a, I, I, I don't know any billionaires. I don't know rich people. I'm not bleeding for them. My heart does not go out for them. I look out on every corner of California's major cities and you see homeless people. You see gentrification alongside homeless people. You see the most liberal state who accepts this kind of pollution and homelessness who's willing to walk the streets of Santa Monica, who's willing to go down by the Tenderloin and go to Macy's just outside the Tenderloin and go to a five-star restaurant with a homeless person dying on the streets. You go to Beverly Hills, I've been all over. I go to San Diego. San Diego ha has, has huge blockades of, of where there's tents. Santa Monica, Venice, Dodger Stadium. You keep pulling around and around and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because sure. people are making money 
like crazy under a pandemic and everybody's going broke and on the streets. So what is your solution for these things? Sure. Okay. As a social worker, I have a master's degree in social work. So I've seen the nonprofit world. Comes down to this. When I started this field in 1999, uh, a supplemental security check for, for the people I was working with out in the streets who had schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, blah, 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 who had disabilities, was getting a check about $950, $950 a month. In 1999 in Long Beach, the rent was $500 a month. Mm. And there were a lot of people out on the streets. 20 years later, that check is $980 a month. And rent is $1,000 a month and everybody's out in the streets. At the federal level, hey Henry, my kid. At the <laughs> federal level, the fixed income earners, the, the disabled, the seniors, all these people who are on fixed incomes, they're getting checks at rates that are 25 years old. Yeah. But the rents have gone up, right? Mm -hmm. Food has gone up. And we don't talk about that because it's because you know we go by the standards of all America. I and mean, you've got you got if you got North Dakota uh, having two senators having just as much to say as the two senators in California and in North Dakota, they don't have these problems. Well, that's not a national solution. That's not a national problem. So it's not really a national problem to increase uh, increase SSDI, increase to increase SSI, and give the people the money back to pay their rent. And but we say let's do subsidized housing. And but what they raise the rents on arm for rent control. For every thousand housing units, rental units that go up 30%, we'll get maybe two or three subsidized units in its place. So the production of rental, of, of, of the production of uh, uh, subsidized housing is at a snail's pace, and we are at a we're at a, a tidal wave of rentals, rents being raised and wages being stagnant, not only at the minimum wage level. But at the federal level, what the federal government is supposed to be applying to the aged, to the disabled, to, to the people in foster care, coming out of foster care, those people that the Christians are supposed to be loving are left out on the cold. At the federal level, all I would do is raise those checks, give Medicare for all, raise a society checks, take care of the disabled, and ensure housing then we're going to be, we're, we'll have our billionaires will become trillionaires. Because look, let's do some math. Can I, oh, I, I, I'm on fire right now. I drink a little tea. Do I'm like, how am I doing, sir? Uh, you want to interject? I was going to say, uh, have you uh, looked up to, uh, do you know how many uh, idle housing in, uh, in California would be able to be uh, bought by the state and turn into low income housing? Yeah, we're not going to do that. We can't do that. We, we just can't. You, um, you, guys, you guys can't do that. Now you guys have, uh, the state doesn't have the budget for that kind of thing? No, no. Government agencies, I work for governments. The worst idea for a government is to assume responsibility of something. When, it, when, when, when you go to a government building, a lot, of, they, a lot of times the government buildings are rented out, right? Mm -hmm. It's about contracting. For the yeah. government to assume this huge responsibility and the ideas of post office times that we're going to do all of it at once is not in the interest of the government. Would you would you not agree? Yeah. Now, um, when you look at, let's look at rent control for a second. Yeah. Um, it's not a socialist idea. I like numbers. Let's do some quick numbers. Mm -hmm. I live in Long Beach. At the time I ran for mayor in 2018, there were 120,000 120, housing units, mm -hmm. rental and owned. 70% was rental and subsidized housing of all the housing in Long Beach, right? About 80,000 units. Right. Between 2015 to 2017, rents went up 30% over three years. The average rent, about $1,000, would mean that prior to rents going up 30%, prior to uh, that, 
uh, the citywide rent rate was about $1.7 billion. After that, it went up to about $3 billion a year. That means in the renter's income in Long Beach, over a billion dollars got sucked out of the local economy and went to the, all the rent, people that own the rental units, by and large, which, is, which, are, which are corporations and investors out of the city. Then we saw restaurants going under, businesses going empty. And then the mayor is going, I love local business. I'm against rent control because that hurts local business because local business, or, business owns the renter units, but they don't, not a lot. It's meaningful to this older generation that played Monopoly and bought rental units as investment properties, but most people don't do that that day. That's going away. But there is this stronghold of like, oh, you can't, you can't do rent control. But if you look at the, the, the consequence of not doing rent control, and this is, I'll, I'll send you the LA Times article out of this. Pas Pasadena, LA, Long Beach, between 20, 2014, 2015, and 2017, went up 30% over three years. It was national news. Mm -hmm. And then if you do, how much was 30%? You're like, oh, over a billion dollars in a small little Long Beach city of less than 500,000 people, a working class town where 30% are poor? Yeah. 70% are rental units? And you know, to cry, oh, well, th let's be a Republican, right? Where's the American dream to open up a pizzeria? If someone like, you know, uh, what's, you know, who, who's now in the real estate agent who's buying it all up, uh, you know? Uh, uh, the Black Rock, Blackstone. Bert, yeah, there you go. If these guys come in and buy up all the rental units, it's, it's just, uh, um, it's just not there. It's not true. It's an old fable. So, Lack of rent control destroyed local capitalism. Did uh did California have a rent control uh, back when? They tried to get rent control in 2018 when I was running for mayor. Not only were they trying to get rent control um ballot on the ballot in Long Beach, but at the state level also they were trying to get a proposition for rent control. Neither of them which passed. Even if they would have, they had that uh, they had the Hawkins Justice. They had this thing called Hawkins. Uh, of something that escapes my mind, which says that um, uh, units that are built before, um, after a certain uh, year are exempt from rent control. So only older units could be, I think it was 1981 or 82, and units older than 1981 or 82 could be a sub subject to rent control where newer buildings, because they're still on, were recovering from the development, they could be exempt. So again, you know, it for the corporations. Right. So, uh, so here you have a, a very basic example of how uh, something that is, um, we are stuck in politics of who's against rent control, who's for rent control. I have a very specific example of how uh, rent control uh, killed capitalism, lack of it. Okay. So um, you don't need, uh, you, you need to give people enough money, pay them $25 an hour, I'm not even going to back that up. I've been fighting for $15 an hour since, be since before Occupy LA. And right, well, Occupy, I refer to Occupy LA, so Occupy Wall Street. Before Occupy Wall Street, I was advocating for $15 an hour. That was in 2010. Mm. $25 an hour is what we need. We need SSI checks. We need retirement checks, disability checks that pay the rent because what are you going to do? Put mom and uncle on a, right now you're going to get subsidized housing for mom and grandpa for seniors. You got two hour, two years waiting list. And then in the nice ones, it's, it's, it's macabre. Cause I did this. You go to a really nice unit. It's full. You get put on a waiting list to go to a really nice complex as a senior for senior subsidized housing. They're all full. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for someone to die. Right. That's the opening or yeah. go to a, or go to a skilled nursing facility. That's, that's the system. It's like, oh, seniors, wait for someone your age to die or go to a skilled nursing facility for you to get the next step. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, uh, yeah. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But how, but how would you fix the problem in Social Security as far as the lack of payment in regards to percentage? Raise it. No, <laughs> no Raise I, I, it. I'm saying as far as it being, a, being an actual uh, uh, a not a, not a legislation but a program they they have a cap on it and 
Uh -huh. they said, and they say that uh, that FICA tax is going to fund it. Would you take the Would you take the language out and say that is solvent, as in like always has to be paid into? Where I would start is, is I would I would declare an emergency. That's where I'd start. No, sorry, what? I would declare an emergency is where I would start. Okay. First, first step, going if I got elected, I thought okay. before I started to write. Uh, you know, bills and things like that to, and, and, and whatever and try to and try to work to where we can pass legislation to fix that. Yeah. First, let's declare, let's declare an emergency because the people have waited long enough for things to go to the House, get kicked out of the House, go to the House because the Senate gets kicked back. They've waited long enough. It is an emergency, much like the climate is an emergency. Mm -hmm. Right? There are some things in this world that it's like, uh, there's an analogy that's really not true. It's a, it's a, apocryphal of uh, the old crab in the pot and it's just sits there and it keeps going around it's not really true crab, that's not really true crabs by the yeah. way but they, they have that you know they, you know we put a crab in there and as the water heats up it doesn't care because it's gradually getting there blah 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 yeah. but that's the way the world is now we're used to all this homelessness we're used to our seniors being poor we're used to we're used to people like seniors going i gotta go to canada get my medications okay And act. There we go. I'm sorry. Yeah, the uh, uh, you froze, so I didn't know. Uh, I, <laughs> so I, I, I was, so I was trying to like let, let the data and see, see if you got back on. But go ahead, please. The craziness is that people are acting normal in abnormal times. The craziness is that we're we're in absolutely crazy times, and people are walking around like it's like like it's just normal. And one of them is what's going on with their seniors? What's going on with their disabled? Why is everyone with schizophrenia living out in the streets? Right? Yeah. Let's talk emergencies. Let's talk about that. I, I of course, you know, uh, I believe in this, mm -hmm. and, and I do believe it's an emergency, and uh, I do believe the climate is an emergency, and I do believe that uh, when people hear that word, people have different definitions of that word. Mine is true to that, which is an emergency. Uh, when other people hear it, they think, well, then maybe we should hold more meetings on it. Maybe we should uh, have more panel discussions on it. Maybe we should go on TV more about it. That's not my definition of emergency. And that is what I accuse of, of Congress being right now. Mm. It's not really understanding the word of emergency. And uh, where is California on uh, ranked choice voting and, uh, and uh, a multi-party multi system? Right now, um, I've been reading about it, and I probably should have memorized all the all all the uh, s blah 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 the numbers um, the Green Party's been sending me. Is is that um, they're making it more difficult for the Green Party to uh, stay on the on the ballot and third parties really in general, um, and they're um, making it because you know they want us for uh, for federal funding a uh, uh, you know a candidate a candidate of through third parties got to get a percentage across the board and then they they get that federal funding and they keep on pulling that that carrot out there's a lot there's a lot about that they they um they're they're really pushing for rank uh voting here in the united states and uh and i think you know uh if we can't fix the whole world of voting we might as well try ranked voting um to see if it's something different um i don't um it's not the ideal world that i would want um, I, I really think that it just comes down to is our um, politics are corrupt, our educations are corrupt. We have the billionaires giving millions to these candidates and they buy the media. You have three companies that own all the media and then they control it, uh, all the outlets. And, uh, and it's now the election cycle, which should only be about three months is two years. And what candidate can afford to run a, a campaign for two years. And you gotta have, you know, especially when you look at the juggernauts of the presidents, they're running at $10 million a month at the heat of it. And they gotta run like that. And they got, we got there getting $10 million a month for a whole year. So it weeds people out, it weeds you and me out. This, yeah. is, this is the story that I'm trying to come off to my head is, is that, um, this is why I'm running, is that this is my third time running, right? That's, um, when I ran, for, I ran for city council and mayor, and when you run for political office, you got to go down to the uh, city clerk's office. Mm -hmm. You got to fill out the forms during the right times. You have to get things notarized. 
you have to do things a certain way. You have to try to get on it. And, 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 and that's what I learned. Um, you're going to run for U.S. Senate. You have to, you know, instead of following with this secretary of uh, state, you, um, the, the clerk's office so, uh, at, in California, you got to do with the FEC. And all these little small things teaches you how to run for political office for free. And, and, I, and I would say that's, that's where I'm kind of being an a-hole. It's about really trying just to get out in political office. I'm 53. I, I, I know poverty. I know environmentalism. I know science. So I, 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 if, I can, if I get the luxury of saying the things I'm 99% sure of, they are things that, the other, that people in the duopoly, what they call the duopoly, right? Um, are afraid to say because they're afraid to lose other votes or donations. Mm -hmm. But I, and so I, I enjoy that so much. I have kids and I just enjoy, and I'm like, you know, the trees are burning. The seas, the, the oceans are on fire. There are, as I working 20 years with homeless people, I've seen all my, all my work reverse of trying to get people out off the streets. I've, all I've seen it do is grow. But now I, I, I know this shit. Yeah. And you put me in front of people and, uh, and I'll just tell them the way it is. Yeah. And that gives me joy. And, and if someone wants to do that, write me and I'll tell you how to fill out those forms, how to do everything for free, spend a few months preparing the campaign and getting out there to say, to call out what you need to call out. And what's your email so that people can actually email you these kind of questions? It's a... Uh, Hank, H-E-N-K, the number four, Senate at gmail.com. Go to my website, hank for senatecom Okay. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. And, there, and you know, when, when, I, when I ran for mayor, did you look me up about when I ran for mayor? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, how, how, I can't see. Do I, do I have we have like a minute. We, we have like a minute. Give me more, but look. I ran for mayor, uh -huh. Long Beach, 2018. Nobody else ran. Mm -hmm. It's all in newspapers. Somebody came to me from high school and said, don't run for mayor because the mayor that we have is great. We don't need a campaign. If we run, it'll cost the city $250,000. They said, if you don't run, we'll give you a place in city hall. And I ran. I know. It's in the news. Look it up. It's in the paper. And I even exposed the emails to it. And I ran. I got 20% of the votes. I gained, I, I got $800 flat and the guy had $400,000. And I got to tell you, I don't like the guy too much because he ruined my hometown. Mm. But it was like, I made shirts. You should talk to me about that. Look it up. Hank Con, mayor of Long Beach. Well, it's an interesting story. And it's a great, it's almost right up there with, you know, get my bachelor's degrees. I'll, I'll do that and I'll add it to my uh, to, to uh, a news I do. Well, I've I hope I haven't talked to you, Ralph. I hope I've been okay. No, you you've been fine. Uh, sorry about the time you again. Uh, maybe we do this uh, again in uh, maybe a month or so. And uh, thanks for being here. I hope you have a good night and good luck. And yeah, uh, thank you for running. Oh, I'm gonna think. Donate to my campaign. I need your money. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Have a good night. Uh, you too. Bye.